Jim, today we're going over arguably one of the coolest variants of the Car 15. It's gonna be a 723 setup, and it's going to be most widely known from its use in Operation Gothic Serpent by a particular hero, a Delta hero known as Gary Gordon, who would go on to receive the Congressional Medal of Honor. Now, this thing lives rent free in my head, and I'm very excited to go over it today on Administrative Results. <laughs> you know, trolls on the internet are like, hey, admin, why do you LARP? Why do you do it, man? I try and tell them, but they just never get it. They don't understand the importance of getting out there and testing out your kit. Oh, you can't, an angle. Sending some rounds down range with the boys, having a good time. Mentally and physically refreshing. And upholding the true values of the Second Amendment as our founding fathers intended. Of course they don't get it, man. They never will. Hold oh, last mag! Now, we've gone over a number of different variants of the 723 here on the channel, but this one is going to be very special to our hearts because what this is, is it's going to be more real-life accurate, as opposed to movie accurate. So there's some certain things on here that all fit within the timeline. It may not have been 100% the correct setup, but for the most part, it is very close to what they actually used based off of what we know. Now, sadly, the actual weapons have been lost. They just don't have them out there. Maybe they're hanging on some wall in Somalia somewhere, but sadly, we don't have those weapons. So a lot of speculation and a lot of inferences based off old grainy photos from the 90s have been used to bring back to life a lot of the setups that those guys used back in the 1990s. So all of this revolves around Operation Gothic Serpent. Now, in the movies, it's mainly shown to be Delta and the Army Rangers, but in reality, there was a lot of people involved, Navy SEALs, Marines, a bunch of high-speed guys doing high-speed things, but the movie mainly shows off the two units of Delta and Rangers. And they show them off to their level of professionalism, they show them off crushing it and doing their thing and going through the crazy scenario that they had to go through in that event. Now, one interesting aspect about the movie is that oftentimes, movies will blow up real life to make him seem crazier. But in this case, I think that real life would have been crazier than the movie. And of course, we'll dive onto that some more. Now, one thing I love about this retro setup, it's kind of like that meme where it's like 30 year old guns in my head. You think of like the M16 from Vietnam or the XM177, but 30 year old guns in reality, it's this, it's this dude, 30 years ago, they're rocking something that looks like this. Now the big thing off the rip that is not correct is gonna be this IR device right here, which is going to be the pack 4 c up here. Now they didn't really have these at the time, they had the AIM-1D. Now the AIM-1D and the differentiation for IR aiming devices, all that to be said is that they still have, for what it is, a pretty modern setup what we have today. It's like kind of the thing of times a flat circle and you are seeing the reruns coming back to life. <laughs> I didn't see you there. What? How'd you get in here? Well, hey, now that I got you, I gotta tell you about this video sponsor, CloneRifles.com. You can also find them on Instagram, and they are very shadow banned, just like your boy. So that means they make good content. If you want to have an in-depth knowledge and resource for building out clone rifles, then I would check out Clone Rifles. Now, not only do they have an excellent educational resource, but they are hosting an event in Templeton, Pennsylvania, on September 7th and 8th. Two full days of ripping belt feds, shooting clone guns, doing comp competition shooting in like a cloner sense, shooting out to a mile. There will be a bunch of really cool companies out there. People from all over the country will be there. It's gonna be the bell of the ball as far as gun shoots are concerned. This is good stuff if you're a cloner, fellas. This is it. Now, registration closes on July 4th because of limited space. You don't wanna, don't listen, dude, you're a cloner. You don't want to miss this. This is it, buddy. So a big thank you to CloneRifles.com. Now let's get back to the Gordy video. The big thing that I love is going to be the carry handle. I'm a big simp for carry handles, and I love that we have the red dot on top because it actually makes for a really good time for passive aiming through nods, which I enjoy thoroughly if you shoot under darkness. It makes a lot of sense. Now, the tech on itself of, say, the IR laser or the flashlight, gonna be pretty dated. 
and the lumen output on these old Surefire 660s are just not good. I will say the Surefire 660 does beat running a QXL dive light underneath like Larry Vickers rifle for the size that you get. And then you can also throw an IR filter on top of that so you can have some IR flood if you're running your nods. So the equipment on here is dated in that sense compared to what we have now like Engals or mod lights or the Surefires we have now, but it's still like the same thought process. Like you have your white lighter, you have your IR flood, you have your laser, and then you have this beautiful suppressor up here, which I think is arguably one of the coolest parts about the rifle. Because the CAR-15 or the 723, whatever you want to call it, it has this overall cool vibe. And then when you add the suppressor on it, because it looks like it's actually going to be like a 10 inch barrel, but surprise, surprise, Monsieur, there's actually a 14 five inch barrel hiding underneath this suppressor that shrouds the entire thing. And it gives it this really elegant aesthetic buzzword and it just oh, it looks so good i love the way this setup looks i mean i'm a big simp for the blood diamond car 15 but for the practicality the blood diamond car 15 gets outshined by the actual the real McCoy, the actual car 15, the 723 with a 14 five inch barrel and a suppressor as far as practical, practical, <laughs> as far as real life is concerned. I'd much rather take this as opposed to the weird moderator on the Blood Diamond car 15. Why is that such a big deal? Well, of course, if you don't know, 5.56 excels with longer barrels. It usually just doesn't, I mean, it's still gonna kill you with a short, it's gonna put you six feet under. All right, doesn't matter if it's short or not, but out to distance, ballistically, it just performs better with the longer barrels. And they found that 14.5 was that sweet spot between going shorter and then say 20 inches. And it's very wieldy, it's very maneuverable. And the gun feels so freaking good to run. Like if the world was ending and I had the option of running this, I'd be like, all right, cool. Yeah, I'll rock this. Technic's a 30 year old gun. I don't care. I'm going out in style. I'm going to look cooler than all the ops. Now, as much as I love this build, sadly it is not mine. It belongs to a dear friend of mine, Fat Marcus Luttrell. Joel, get over here. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, Absolutely. Man. Thank you so much. Sorry for calling you Fat Marcus Luttrell. Just... It was the best nickname that I've been given in the comments yet, so. The comments in the internet are brutal. They, they never... stay undefeated and they don't lose. They never lose. It's okay. They haze me for my hairline too. Anyway, so we have your beautiful Colt 723 build right here. Now, this is going to be your gun that you let us borrow for the channel. I am trying to shill for Big Colt, and I'm just kidding. So we're going over it today. Tell me about why you built it, and then tell me about some of the process of acquiring the old parts. Believe it or not, I joined the military back in 1996, so three years post. Believe it or not, I was born in 1996. <laughs> so I joined just shortly thereafter when Operation Gothic Serpent happened, and so the, the story and the lore was very fresh. Mm. And a lot of the stuff coming out and like Soldier of Fortune and stuff at that time, you know, you started seeing pictures and started getting these ideas. And it was always a rifle that I wanted to build. And then when the movie came out, I was a little bit older. I was like, that's my golden goose. Like, that's yep. the one I'm going after. I know that feeling. Shortly thereafter that, started getting into the clones a little bit more from Allen Engineering. Got with Craddock Precision. They did 12 seven barrels to pair with the AEM-5. I think he did 10. I bought one of them, put it together and built my Gordon carbine. So I sourced the... C7 upper, it was an 80% lower that I form one and then actually got all the markings and the serial number is actually the date of Blackhawk down. Very cool. I sourced the actual aim point 5000 with the arms, rail, and mounts, the 660. And I've had it set up a few different ways. Like in the movie, they had the light taped to the handguard. I've seen other people do it down here, kind of like the Blood Diamond carbine. Yep. This is a Surefire M25 mount and mounts off the front sight base. This was actually period correct at that time. They did have them. Shortly thereafter that, I added the Pack 4 c Just, it was, as you say, the vibe was missing because it didn't have a laser. Mm -hmm. And uh, I searched and searched and searched and people want really big money for the AIM 1Ds. Couldn't find one, so I went with the Pack 4 c with a barrel mount underneath. And you know, Colt Bolt Carrier. I did my little custom piece here with the Lone Star grip. That's just my preferred grip. And then I've got a Geisley trigger in it just for, it's just my preferred trigger. It's preferred trigger. Yeah. Don't trigger me, I'll melt. <laughs> and so I built it and it's kind of one of the clones that it kind of got me started down that path of building clones. And then now like the Gordon clone is like, the, everyone's trying to build it and reproduce it. So mm. now you got companies remaking the original suppressors you've got other companies making different collars so you can run a 12.5 12.7 or 14.5 mm -hmm. now everyone's trying to find the uppers c7 yeah. uppers are, are what everyone's having a hard time finding but like you said i've taken this rifle to many courses and i've watched a lot of you know really good rifles go down and this thing just runs so when it doesn't have the light and the laser on it it's literally got everything you need a suppressor and a red dot yeah like you said it'd be hard pressed not to use this for the end of times i know i'd grab it huh
It's well balanced and like you said, everything's like unity mounts and everything like that for nod shooting. This is almost identical. Delta was very ahead of their time, running high speed gear, using rifles with big old risers and dual tubes. 40 year old optic that still works. Very so. impressive. Yeah, gotta give it to Aimpoint on that one. Aimpoint, please bring back a retro line of old red dots. It makes no sense, but I want it. Damn do I want it. And then to finish it off, the sling is an old GP sling with 550 cord, just the silent sling, so. And then the one last thing we we'll talk about here real quick, the suppressor is actually coated in the original gun coat color, so. It's all the little things. Yeah, so like that, you know, and like I said, it, it, this uh, from what I was told when I got this can, this was like a 35-year-old can of paint that they, that, they, that they had on the shelf. That is crazy. Now real quick, I wanna show you what the gun looks like without the can on there. So you can see the 14 five-inch barrel with the threads exposed and the can threads directly to the barrel, which is pretty cool. I like the setup of this and I think it's a really cool idea for a setup. I love when suppressors shroud the entire barrel. I do think it does help with the weight balance of the front end of the gun because this is a beefy can, I'd say and it does a good job at what it does. Now the original cans were gonna be 30 cal cans that they rebaffled to be 556. So it's really cool to have it out here. Anyway, you can't show this on YouTube. Actually you can. It all culminates to being a beautiful rifle and I appreciate you let me borrow today, sir. Do your worst. Now, I think one reason I love retro builds so much, especially the Black Hawk Down era build, is because it's that weird marriage of retro gear coming into the modern era, where you have the old carry handle builds just barely getting to the point where they start doing flat top Picatinny, you know, modifying the upper receivers to be like directly screwing on red dots and all this weird stuff that they had to do before they came out with, you know, the Mark 18 or the M4A1. They had to do all this weird stuff and use what they had, and they're using this older gear you know you have some guys still using alice or maybe they're doing updated ranger plates or ranger carriers and it's all this weird stuff for a really cool amalgamation of like old meets new and then the new waves are about to come in because not just 10 years later you have the invasion of iraq and the beginning of the global war on terror in 2003 so it's like right there and in that meantime there's a lot of progression going on so i really love that era and i especially love when we can get out here and run a retro rifle and yeah technically this is 30 year old kit but it's still so applicable to today i mean this would still be a great self-defense weapon this would still be a great you know self that's the same thing this would still be a great end of the world dodgeball match russians falling out of the sky weapon right it still holds up today it is still so cool to see that because it's just cool the cool factor is through the roof with this so me getting ars on the channel now it's going to be rare and rare unless it's retro guns or guns that have a significant story behind them and something like this definitely passes all of those checks because the story behind this is not only just so heavy, but inspiring. Now the gun itself is very cool, but the story behind the firearm is what to me is the most interesting aspect. The human element, the extreme of the human experience and the level of valor and selfless sacrifice that went into it. So Super 6-4 goes down and Master Sergeant Gary Gordon and Sergeant First Class Randy Shugart both requested multiple times to be inserted so they can go to the crash site because the convoy wasn't going to get there. Now there was a third member in that sniper team, Brad Halling. Now it's an interesting and crazy world is that you can follow Brad Halling on Instagram, and I do. And it's really cool to see that because it's such like a personal, con I don't know the guy, but it's a personal connection to it. Now, Hauling stayed behind to man the minigun because one of the crew chief guys got hurt and he was gonna provide cover and, and keep that Black Hawk defended. Those guys get inserted. So ultimately, Master Sergeant Gary Gordon, Sergeant First Class, Randy Shugart would be overwhelmed by enemy Somalis, but they would end up getting rewarded the Medal of Honor posthumously. It's a very powerful story about self-sacrifice. It's a very powerful story about duty and going above and beyond of what is required of you. And it's of course one of those things that I personally hold valuable and I'm sure you as the watcher hold valuable yourself. So the gun is just a small aspect of that. The gun is just a tool used by those high-speed guys that went above and beyond and it's a, a token of appreciation that we can do you know years later of course i personally don't know those guys but i have a ton of respect for them for what they did and of course we as you know gun enthusiasts can honor those gentlemen that paid the ultimate price in a, a small token of cloning such as this now of course today we're using some 77 grain otms from the ammo sponsor of the channel aac big thank you to those guys they'll hook it up for all your ammo needs and it's been running really good in this 14.5 Pretty slick setup. 14.5 with a freaking big old suppressor on there and then with some 77 grains. Sounds great. No ear pro either. It doesn't like hurt whatsoever, which is the crazy part. Crazy. Unlike the big ones. Ah!
Got them. Gentlemen, looking cool is half the battle. And this video sponsor, Americana Pipe Dream Apparel, wants you to look your best. So a big thank you to AP for sponsoring this video. Fantastic young Zoomers. Getting after it in the mill serve space. They have a bunch of awesome stuff on their website. Night vision knives, manuals, and of course, the drippiest of mill serve. Big thank you to AP. Love those guys a bunch, load. And they'll hook up your wardrobe. Now, I love me my Blood Diamond Car 15, but this is going to be a movie clone, not based on real life. But fun fact, it's a two for one. And I always get this comment from people that are like, hey, did you know that the Blood Diamond Car 15 was also in Black Hawk Down? Now, to be fair, I'm not sure if they're referencing the Gordon Car 15 that's in the movie, if they think that's the one, because it bears a very strong resemblance. And to be fair, it could be. But I did find pictures of actors that I know of at least using a what appears to be a Blood Diamond Car 15 in Black Hawk Down. Now, of course, is that accurate to real life? I definitely don't think so. I think it all would have been the 723s, not with the weird moderator shown on there. There. So it's a cool little Easter egg, at least for me as a movie guy, and I'm sure for you as a movie enjoyer as well, that we get that. So fun tidbit. Now the company that supplied the guns is gonna be called Bapti & Co. So at least for these variants, like the Blood Diamond guns crossing over to the Black Hawk Down guns, Bapti & Co. is what I read on IMFDB. The masculine urge to be riding around in helicopters with a car 15 and a bunch of highly trained killers. Some even say it could cure male depression. Now, an interesting dynamic with cloning the Gothic Serpent Black Hawk Down guns. You essentially have two options. You have a Gothic Serpent clone or you have a Black Hawk Down clone. You have options of saying, hey, I'm going to go for the real life clone or I'm going to go for the movie clone. Now, I think personally the movie clone would be easier. The suppressor in the movie does not look like the AEM suppressor, so there is that. So there could be some weird amalgamation of using both real life parts and then using movie parts. Easy thing, of course, would be that red dot in the movie. They're all using like Comp M2s and then you know surefire 660s there are repros of surefire 660s like some updated versions i tried to buy one but i couldn't it didn't show up at all and i wanted to use it for future clone builds but you can find them out there floating about i know i paid a pretty penny for mine i paid as much as like a modern surefire is today for like five lumens <laughs> but it's for the lark you know it's for the lark interesting options i think because if you're someone like me and you like having something either from the movies or from real life then the options are there it's gonna cost you some money, just like everything good in this life will, but many such cases, my lord. Now, I'm not sure if this is true or not. I have this weird feeling about it, and that is if it's easier to clone retro stuff now or if it was back in the day. And when I say back in the day, I mean just like five years ago at most, because the cloners have always been around to whatever capacity. Now, cloning guns that are 30 years old like this gets kind of tricky. A lot of the parts are very outdated, and the big downside about them is that they're hard to find, so that jacks up the price point on the market. Normally, it's like, as gear gets outdated, it becomes cheaper, much more affordable to pick up, but with stuff like this, it's weirdly, it becomes more expensive. That's because, you know, stuff gets destroyed, you know, guys take it home, all this weird stuff, right? Companies now have been coming out with a lot more retro lines. The Brownells, God bless their heart, I feel like when I was coming up in guns and getting really interested in cloning stuff, Brownells did a bunch of retro line of stuff. And I had just missed the boat because all their stuff was sold out and I don't think they had a plan to bring new stuff back into market. I think of Troy doing the XM177. And then thankfully, I'll give it to PSA with the H&R line. They brought back a lot of retro stuff, but I did give them crap for 723 because I wanted it to be more aesthetically pleasing with the brass deflector. They had the more Bruh. black of the brass deflector as opposed to the more A2 style brass deflector. So I feel like the options are getting better. I'm sure, you know, honestly, I don't see why freaking PSA couldn't make a 14.5 like this, like a ready to go package and all you need is the can pretty much. There's really no excuse. I think they could do it. They're already making like A1 or C7 uppers. So there's a lot of potential there. Really is an aesthetically pleasing firearm. It's freaking beautiful. And I am so thankful I got to show it off to you guys today because not only does it look cool, not only does it run awesome, but it is such a powerful story behind it. One that we are all familiar with. Thanks for watching, gentlemen. As always, I have nothing else for you. Catch you guys on the flip.